What's going on guys, it's your average consumer, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at 10 awesome tips and tricks from a Mac users out there. But before we get started, we gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Vectinator. Vectinator is a free vector design graphic software for the Mac, iPad, or even iPhone. And if you wanna do any kind of like graphic design or illustrations, you're gonna to wanna to check this out. This software gives you everything you need to not only create illustrations, but also logos, posters, app designs, and a lot more. But what I personally really like about Vectornator is all of the features that you get on something like the Mac, you're gonna be able to find them all on the iPad or even iPhone, which makes taking your work on the go a very seamless process. So if you guys wanna learn more about Vectornator, definitely check the links down below in the description. Like I said, this thing is free, and if you're interested in learning about graphic design or illustrations, you're gonna absolutely wanna check it out. But now onto the list. First thing we're gonna talk about is being able to change your volume and brightness in smaller increments. Now, the way to do this is by holding down the shift and option buttons on your keyboard and hitting those volume controls. And when you do this, you'll notice that you're not going down by one notch anymore. It's actually much smaller increments. So if you wanna get your volume or even your brightness to a very fine level, you'll be able to do that with this. And honestly, it's one of those things that are just like, never knew existed. Now, next up is a pretty cool tip if you don't have access to a printer nearby and you need to sign a document. Now, to do this, all you have to do is open up Preview, maybe open up a PDF that you need signed, go to Tools in the menu bar, then Annotate, and then Signature, and then you can sign with the trackpad if you like, but we know that's gonna come out pretty badly. So to the right of that, you can see Camera. Now, with this camera feature, all you have to do is sign the piece of paper with the signature that you'd like, and then use the camera to scan it. And then with that scan, you can go ahead and take the text of your signature and throw it onto any PDF or document. This is a real lifesaver if you don't have access to a printer or a scanner because it looks exactly like your signature since it is, and you can place it wherever you want on the document. Now, the next one's pretty interesting. We all know Control-Alt-Delete on Windows PCs. That brings up that task manager where you can close out applications. And it feels like Mac doesn't have an option like that, but it actually does. To access that, all you have to do is hit Command, Option, and the Escape key, and boom, you're able to close out applications within this little window. And I love this because I recently discovered this thing myself, and I used to have to go through the Activity Monitor to close out applications. It was a hassle. This thing, a few keyboard strokes, and boom, you're just using Control-Alt-Delete on the Mac. I'm not sure how many people actually know this, but you're actually able to leave a custom message on your lock screen in case you happen to misplace something like your MacBook Pro. Now we've seen features like this on smartphones in case you misplace it and a good Samaritan picks it up. You can leave a message on where to call or where to send the phone in case that they find it. And you can do that now with something like the MacBook Pro, which is gonna be really nice. And to be able to access the lock screen message, you're gonna have to go to security preferences, security and privacy, general, and then set lock screen message. So if you're using your MacBook for work in a lot of public spaces, definitely take advantage of this feature. Now, if you're someone who works with a lot of documents, you're gonna like this one. Mac OS actually saves the previous versions of documents so that you can access them even after you've already saved. And to be able to see all those versions, all you have to do is hit the file menu, go to revert to, and then browse all versions. Now this pretty much pulls up something that looks like Time Machine, and you get to see all the different variations of the document that you made previously. And if you want, you can just go back to the one that fits your criteria, hit done or restore, and boom, you have the old version of the document. I think personally that is a really, really cool feature in case you made some unnecessary changes or you just made so many changes that you wanna go back to one, Listen, whatever, you'll figure it out. It works really well, and it's cool that macOS has it. Now, this one right here is actually really useful. Built into macOS is the ability to control someone else's screen remotely if they're on the internet. Now, this one is awesome because all you have to do is open up Spotlight by hitting Command and the space bar, type in screen sharing, and you type in their Apple ID, and then it'll prompt them and ask them if they wanna give permission for you to control their screen, and boom you're able to control someone else's screen right from your own computer. Now, this is super, super useful if you've got like a relative who's asking you to help them clean up something on their computer, get rid of a virus, or you know, you know the deal. And I'm telling you guys, this thing, it's a lifesaver. With my dad, 
trust me. And what's really great about this feature is that it's built into the operating system, so no having to download a third-party software or type in any special keys, and it is just way, way easier to do it this way. Now the next feature is a pretty basic feature, but it's something that I feel like a lot of people don't really know about or take advantage of. And that's being able to have a split screen on your Mac. Now to do this is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is hold down that little green button at the top left corner of most applications. So with this, you can actually send it to the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen, or you can make it full screen if you'd like. But with this feature, you'll be able to use multiple applications very neatly side by side. And this just makes it a lot easier to do work if you have to take notes and have a web browser open or something, or maybe even pull up your calendar and maybe some other application. It is something a lot of people don't use, but they really should. And you can even adjust the size if one is more important than the other. Trust me guys, if you're someone who has to multitask between two applications, this is a really, really clean way to do it. Now the next one is pretty cool. There's actually the ability to do unit conversion using Spotlight. Now Spotlight, we mentioned earlier, all you have to do to access it is hit that command and space bar, and then you can type in what you're looking for right there. So if I wanted to convert something like 3,000 US dollars to euros, it would tell me that currently is $2,711.70 or euros. So yeah, it works, it's current, it's really cool. Now the next one is something that I've been using for years and it's actually really useful. It's called Accessibility Zoom. And this thing basically allows you to zoom all the way in on your Mac screen. And to access it, all you have to do is of course, go into your system preferences, accessibility, zoom, and then you hit that very first option. And with that, you'll be able to zoom in by pressing command option and the plus sign or the minus sign. And honestly, sometimes I like this more than zooming in on the browser because then when you're on the browser, everything just starts to look weird. This thing just makes it really simple to just get a nice close-up of whatever you wanna look at. It's just awesome. Now, the next tip is actually pretty cool if you're a Safari user. Now, if you like to watch videos while you do something on your computer, and maybe it's not the main focus of your time on the computer, you actually have the ability to do something like picture in picture on your computer. Now, to do this is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is right click the video and hit enter picture in picture. And with this, you'll get that little pop up where your video goes to like the bottom of the screen and you can actually adjust the size, move it around, place it wherever you need to. And then you'll be able to use another application while you're watching your video. Now, this is really cool if you wanna multitask, but it doesn't work for every website out there. And I believe YouTube, you have to like click it twice or something. So everywhere is a bit different, but it is a cool feature to access nonetheless. If you have other cool tips that I haven't talked about today, definitely leave them down below in the comment section for the community so that we can all know what the Mac is capable of that we might not know already. But that wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives it a thumbs up. And I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace.